Thanks for staying tuned. This is still Breakfast Central. It's time for Sports Updates. I'm Samson Oledi. We begin Sports Update at this hour with the world of cricket where a magnificent tournament high 174 from Quentin the Cook, his third century in five games, and a rapid 90 from Henry Klassen helped South Africa past post rather a massive total of 382 to 5 before sealing an emphatic victory by 149 runs in the World Cup group match against Bangladesh at the Wakanda Stadium in Mumbai on Tuesday. The Cock, who earned his 150th cap for the Proteas, followed innings of 100 against Sri Lanka and 109 against Australia with an even more imperious display, facing just 140 deliveries and collecting 15 fours and 7 sixes in another silky combination of power and finesse before holding out on the third man boundary with five overs of the innings remaining. South Africa's fourth win from five games since them climbed above New Zealand into second place on net run rates on the tournament log, two points behind India who have won all five matches so far. We we'll definitely wish the Proteas men the very best rather than talking about the Cricket World Cup in India. Over from that to football matters, Egyptian giants Al Akli and South African champions Mamlodi Sandals booked their places in the inaugural African Football League semi-finals on Tuesday following stalemates against Simba Sporting Club and Petro de Luanda in the return legs. Al Akli's vital away strikes ultimately proved the difference across the two legs having drawn two all at Tanzania before playing out a one all stalemate in Egypt. The 3-3 scoreline after both quarterfinals matches allowed the Egyptian side to clinch their first semi-final spot in the history of the Pan-African competition. Meanwhile, South African giants Mamlo de Sundowns qualified 2-0 on aggregate against Angolan giants Petro following a goalless draw at home. The Brazilians will take on 11-time African champions Alakli in the semi-finals. He was signed and brought to Cairo by Alakli. It's punched well, not convincing me at all. And had a real mess of that. Ali Salim it came for it. It was a looping ball into the box. Here comes the corner from Malou. It's going to fall here for Arabi over the top from the. It will definitely be an interesting semi-final between Al Akli of Egypt and Mamlo de Sundowns of South Africa in the inaugural African Football League. We look forward to that. Still talking football matters on the European scene, you had the FA Champions League matches yesterday. And results, you had Bayern Munich defeating Galatasaray by three goals to one away from home. Lons against PSV played out the stalemate. Um, Arsenal getting the win away at Sevilla. Manchester United winning at home against Copenhagen for the first time in the Champions League this season. United getting three points on the board. Jude Bellingham can't stop scoring for Real Madrid as Real Madrid edged Praga by two goals to one and Inter Milan edged Salzburg by two goals to one as well in the UEFA Champions League. It's will be interesting to see how the results pan out in today's matches. Away from there, let's delve into the betting scandal that has rocked Newcastle United's midfielder Sandro Tonali. The latest being that the midfielder and his legal team are in discussions with Italian authorities over a 10-month ban after he admitted to placing bets on matches in which he played. Tonali has been assisting the investigation and his legal team have been working on a plea bargain after he admitted to making bets on AC Milan to win games in a hearing at the Italian Federation in Turin. Without his cooperation, Tonali could face up to a three-year suspension under FIFA rules. An agreement is understood to be closed over the ban which would see Tonali miss the rest of the Premier League season and the European Championships in 2024, should Italy qualify. Tonali is expected to learn what his punishment will be for breaking betting rules in the next 48 hours. As it stands, Tonali is still available to play for Newcastle United in their Champions League game at home to Borussia Dortmund on Wednesday and train with his teammates on Tuesday. Well, sad one right there for the midfielder. We'll see how the ruling will pan out within the next 48 hours. Away from that to tennis, an independent tribunal has suspended American player Jensen Brixby for 18 months after finding that he had committed three whereabouts failures in a 12-month period. The 22-year-old who achieved his highest career ranking of 33rd last year previously accepted a voluntary provisional suspension and a sanction will be backdated to July 5th. The sanction will therefore end on the 4th of January 20. Still talking tennis? Top seed Olga Rune began his era with new coach Boris Becker on Tuesday, earning a 1-6, 7-5, 6-3 win 
over Mirma Kamovic to reach the second round of the Swiss Indoors. The victory counted as revenge for the 20-year-old who lost to the Serbian in his opening match as the older at the ATP event in Stockholm last week. Top seed Rion ended with 37 winners as he set up a second round contest at the St. Chuck's Shop in Basel with Argentine Sebastian Bears. Minutes or so ago, but he takes it 7 5. Is off to a winning start 12 months on. It didn't look like that was going to be the case after about an hour or so when he trailed a set and a break late on. Definitely good to see Boris Becker, the legend himself, back on the tour in terms of coaching. And let's see if he can wield the magic he did with Novak Djokovic this time around with a 20 year old Danish sensation, Ogarin. And finally, on sports update at this hour, the NBA began at the wee hours of today and we had matches. The Denver Nuggets, the defending champions, began the title defense on a winning note against the Los Angeles Lakers by defeating them 119 to 107 points with Leveron James playing his 21st season, while Phoenix Suns um, also got the win over the Golden State Warriors 108 to 104 points. And that's a wrap on sports updates at this time. It's back to you, Oli Vanosarege. Thank you very much, uh, Samson. I'm looking forward to the, I know you didn't mention it, but I'm looking forward to the um, Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury fight. Definitely. I, I, well, I well, we're we're all looking forward to it. Yeah. Do oh, you, you know what date it is? Yes, um, October 30th, and um, it's all to look out for. Um, it's, it's difficult to call the shots right now. Definitely Fury gets into this as, you know, a favorite considering his boxing pedigree, but... You can't rule out the, you know, the puncher's luck, as it were, with the slogan in, in boxing. And that's just um, that one knockout punch that um, yeah, Ngano that has in terms yeah. of the power in his right hand. So it's also look out for it. It will be interesting. Uh, I think um, it, may, it, it won't go down the distance. I think um, there will be a knockout one way or the other. I don't think it will go um, the entire 12 rounds. I'm looking forward. To, I'm actually rooting for Ngano, of course. Uh, <laughs> I would like to see you know, him completely knock out uh, uh, Tyson Fury. I don't expect that he would be, you know, a world heavyweight boxing champion for a long time, you know, if mm -hmm. that's what his interests are, but I just want to see him win this one. But good luck well, to him. Let, let's say it's not been a very good, you know, um, outing for most mixed martial artists yes, who have true. crossed over into boxing. So um, if, if he's able to get a win, it will definitely be a huge upset. I think it would be um, another feather to the cap of the Cameroonian who has taken the sporting world by storm. Yeah, all right. Um, congratulations to the winners yesterday, and I proudly would say that I didn't watch the game. Um, I don't care what happened. Um, wow, this is lasting longer than I expected. Who, was, uh, <laughs> who got to play yesterday? I mean, it's going to last out. In fact, the rest of the season. Good luck to them. Um, thanks a lot for stopping by, Samson. Thank you very much for having me.